Okay, there we go. We there, back. we're back. All right. We're back. We did it. All we right. It. So One week down. two. Yes. But episode four of mm-hmm. Famous Last Words this week. Um, yes. How, how does it feel? I think it feels good. I... I don't know why when we kicked around names for all of the different episodes, how we didn't just instantly go, oh, unpredictable. I That's know. That's the name of, and. I know. Uh, I'm, but I then am... do you start singing unpredictable to the tune of unforgettable? And do you hear you and me instead of Nat and Natalie? Interesting. I was would be going to unbelievable by EMF. Well, that works too. Who And um, weirdly from almost the same era considering the version this is true uh apparently the lead singer slash songwriter of emf is now a school teacher and uh always has to have an awkward conversation with his students when they ask what emf stands for oh well but that's for another show that is for another show um so he couldn't have predicted it he couldn't have predicted it and we're back on track we are look at that well done (laughs) So this week, if for those who have not listened, we are speaking of Mr. Nostradamus himself, beloved, hated, believed to know all all, or not know crap. Right. Very famous predictor of all kinds of things. Yes. Maybe, you know, maybe not so well, or maybe well. Well, and that's, I I think one of the things we talked about a bit when we were recording it and producing it was the idea of how do you discuss his life and how do you sort of acknowledge, I mean, he's had some impact on the world for good or for ill. Right. But how do you also strike that balance of like, some of this is probably, you know, uh, malarkey, but some of it, I don't know. I, I approach everything with like, I wish it was true, but but I feel like his stuff, it. I don't want to be true. Which yes. is weird because of the two of us, I'm the one far more likely. I mean, I clearly am all for tell me what's going to happen. Right. Tell me what the stars have said. What's in my chart? What's in this? But for some reason, I've just never liked him. I think it is because he seems to predict a lot of um, death and destruction. That's probably why. And I want all like ponies and right movie stars but it's his all this to say though his story is really interesting and the story of his last words is pretty fitting regardless of which side of the fence you fall on with him yes and it's interesting because um i i believe it was well i want to get it um it it makes you think and it, it's sort of so incredibly fitting and so such a perfect, like, you couldn't have come up with something better for him Ooh, to say right before he died. Right. Um, but then, I can't remember, are we spoiling these words in this? We are, because it's the after show, so we were assuming you've listened. Right, yes. Sorry, we're still working out a little couple of kinks. But, yes. um, so, that then bodes the question... If it was the maid that allegedly heard said things, right? What if said maid was actually the great predictor of yeah. all things, not just the words, but perhaps those things were predicted yeah. by that? But I don't know, it would make a good movie. I just go back to the fact that all of the editions of his uh, predictions in his lifetime were never printed the same twice. Right. The fact that he had to go into different languages to make the rhymes work. Right. And then one could argue, or let me rephrase that, I might argue the greatest sin in poetry, not rhyming. Yes. Um, Agreed. And so I... And it's an awful lot of... I mean, that's an awful lot of work. That's an awful lot of work now, let alone then. Yes. So and why do it? I don't... No. And so I went through, I found an an article, obviously it worked out nicely as I was doing some of the research that um, it was around the time of the coronation. So 
finding yes. this thing about oh i was wrong when i said charles was not going to take the throne right. but i just and so I, there is a uh, article in, in business insider where they go through some of his predictions that people have said references this and and such um so for example the supposedly he predicted the kennedy assassination right and the prediction translated into english is uh the great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt an evil deed foretold by the bearer of a petition according to the prediction another falls at nighttime conflict at reims london and a pestilence in tuscany so he's either talking about the two brothers being assassinated yes or it sounds like uh italy's not going to be a great place to vacation next summer but italy's always a great place to vacation yeah it's true you get a scooter right well i don't know mm -hmm. i like we get compliments and wine. And this is true. And a coast. If we went and did the show, one of the other shows there, we'd totally be Lucying it in the wine. Of course thing. we would. I um, I already have the outfit ready no, to go. Do. And then uh we'll probably do that in every winery in every country in the world mm -hmm, at some point. Yes, good point. But why is it that he is the most well known, the most that's what I've never understood. So one of the like things, the you know, um, I don't know, like astrologer or the whatever her name is, Caputo, Cleo. Teresa Caputo, Miss Cleo. Well, Miss <laughs> Cleo had a tragic, but like Teresa Caputo, right. no one, but she's way more on point. But yet naysayers who believe in nothing think that everything Nostradamus kind of knew everything. So one of his early predictions was that he predicted the death of Henry II. Um, and so the, the prediction is this young lion, I'm sorry, the young lion will overcome the older one on the field of combat in a single battle. He will pierce his eyes through a golden cage, two wounds made one, then he dies a cruel death. And apparently uh, King Henry II of France, France summer of uh, 1559, was jousting the Comte de Montgomery, six years his younger. Uh, they both had lions on their shields. And their final pass, Montgomery's lance, uh, tilted up, went through Henry's visor, and basically, uh, as his, uh, what do you call those things? The long pointy things when you're jousting. Is it a Is joust? It a lance? Lance, thank you. Don't know where that went. I don't know, because um, you literally said it three words prior. Listen. I'm just telling you, you didn't go far. I got uh, to get the victory of giving you the word that you'd already said. It was this great. is true. So uh, Montgomery's lance splintered. The king got um, two shards uh, of wood, one through his eye, one in his temple. And then I guess they both lodged in his head, which people say is the two wounds made one. He uh, suffered in great pain for 10 days and then died. And people took that to heart saying, oh, well, obviously this guy's got something. Well, okay. But that was back then. Right. Like fast forward all these centuries later. I mean, the National Enquirer still is saying people putting like Nostradamus me. predictions are on the front page. Well, but I think there's also an element of, um, I don't know, everybody wants every story to wrap up nice and neatly everybody wants to say oh diana is killed in a car crash yes everybody this wants seems... to say that <laughs> no 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 Let i me know finish the All right, thought finish. that everybody wants to take something so tragic and unpredictable as that thank you very much yes and put it in some context that it becomes understandable and you can sort of wrap your head around like well this was predestined this was fated to happen i know but again why is I just don't understand why he's the guy. Is it because he was like the, not the first ever, but the first to document the poorly? What? Why is he? I don't know. I want That's know. what's always fascinated me. See, the thing that's fascinated me is who is the first person to say, oh, you think Nostradamus? When someone says something well, stupid. Right. I think it's going to be you. No, please. I wish that was something I started. Um, and then the other thing, so we're going to get heavy and then we can go light in a second, okay. if I may. 
Yes, you may. This sounds like a typical day with you. So the uh, although you usually start light and take us down. Right. Yeah. yeah normally they bring up. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, a uh, article that came out in January of this year said, "What does Nostradamus predict for 2023?" And the headline is scary but fascinating. Um, so the things they claim that he uh, predicted. Um, all right. So uh, he said, uh, "From the celestial fire of the royal on the royal edifice, when the light of Mars will go out, seven months great war, people dead through evil, uh, the king will not fail." So. Some people say this is him predicting the Russia-Ukraine war. Maybe the last week or less um, predicts mm-hmm. another war. Uh, so he, he says there's going to be a world war. Well, not great. Not great, but not surprising either. Yes. Um, uh, apparently. So it could also mean that there's something up with the mission to Mars. Some people have said that that quatrain. Um, others have said that it is, is just predicting a fire at Bunkingham Palace. Hmm. So, not great. But the and, king won't fail, so that's... That's good. Good, but I wh- guess. Who's, who's the king? Well, what king, right? Right. So, again, kind of heavy. World War Three. not a great thing to be like, hey, dude was right. However, I also went through... And found an article article um saying uh what is the impact for 2022 mm. so we can look back now and go oh wow dude was off you know way to spoil it well i mean or I mean, was the dude off right uh well he did uh predict a asteroid impact uh in 2022 okay uh, I guess, according to the way you read the quatrains, he could have been predicting this a few years prior to last year as well. <laughs> uh, I, I, again, spoiler alert. Yeah, we haven't had an asteroid hit the U.S. that or hit the world Earth that impacts everybody. Right. Uh, he did predict the invasion of France. Okay. Yeah, it didn't happen yet. No. So, zero for two. Inflation and starvation, I think we could say. But that's that, a given. That's a push. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a given like every year, it, well, somewhere. He also predicted global warming. So, all right. You but know, to hit this like, year or hit in 2022? Because that ship has sailed. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he also predicted the rise of artificial intelligence. I, again, I guess. Um, I did see some people have been reading the quatrain saying that he's predicted Elon Musk in there too, well, which again I think shows that you can read some of this however you want to. Y- yes, very much so. And uh, it's exhausting. And didn't he wasn't the, didn't he predict the world ended like twenty years ago? Yeah, exactly. This so is, how how is this even? I don't. I'm so my brain is very sore. Well, that's the thing. I, I think when you get the fact that he had to fudge some details to make these quatrains work in the first mm-hmm. place, you could then argue the translation to make them all come together. You know, did he say the thing that predicted the rise of Hitler? Is it in the translation? Is it somebody in the translation kind of fudging everything a little bit more to make it sounds like he's talking about hitler not right. an estuary of the rhine i believe yeah um so it's sort of like a i don't want to say you can't believe everything you read you don't want to say that <laughs> but he raises more questions and answers and yes. i feel like and maybe that's actually the answer to my question is because he raises more questions than answers. He is a constant spark of conversation for people. So perhaps that's why there's the longevity, but mm. I don't with, know. Come up with that yourself, Nostradamus? I did. <laughs> thank you. I, I go back to the similarly, but not similar at all. Um, yes. What I always say to the kids about ghosts. Oh, do tell they're like i don't know but what if they're real what if and i was like 
wake me when you see a ghost at Wednesday at two in the afternoon. Oh, that and happens. Where? And this is now getting off the topic, but. You've never read a ghost story or seen a show about a ghost story where the crazy things happen at all hours of the day. It, in movies, they only come out at night. Right. Because the lighting's better. Right. But during the day, they can they can emerge anytime. I, I have, have seen you no seen evidence. Sixth Sense? Have you seen the others? Ghosts well, were walking around 24-7. I don't want to go into the spoilers for a films that came out 20 plus years ago. No, but they're two really good films. And they are. But <laughs> anyway. Um, yes. I, I just have yet to see any Nostradamus is, is it's a fun read for someone. Right. But I, and I, it's a great famous last words. Like I feel like we is. have like sabotaged our episode because of my disdain for the man. But it is a really good famous last words. It is my mother's favorite. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And she has listened to the whole uh well, no, not the whole season, but anyone's the the, the several we sent her prior. Right. Well, I, I I think the reason it should be included in the first season oeuvre is the fact that it they are so fitting for yes. everything that we know about him. And I think the more you dig into his life, uh, I, I knew nothing about his career in medicine. Right. That, again, tips you, I think, tips the scales towards a, there's some sort of charlatan. He's, he's a conniverheimer. Yeah. I What? <laughs> You've never heard me use that word. I use it all the time. No. Um, Uncle Mac uses that word all the time, and I love it. I've, I've stolen it for myself. It's great, isn't it? It's weird. It, it but it's great. Because it, the word went on past when I thought it was going to I end. know, but it like, <laughs> it just, it, it just fits better when you, when you just extend it like that. I agree to disagree. Yeah, you just got to hear it enough. Um, I was trying to think of, earlier today what was the phrase barnum came up with to describe something that was not true or that was there's something where again legally, yeah. the way you could get around i, I don't mm -hmm. know if it was um hokum or or one of those type phrases um mm -hmm. but i kind of put uh michelle de nostradam yeah. under that kind of that that particular pile I think that's fair. And I think when you put them up against the first three. Well, that's true. We do sort of take a hard turn, but he's our first, like, super, super famous yes. person. Yes. And, and we're taking it back. We're taking it, like, way back. It's somebody super well-known, and I don't think his last words are that well-known. No, but they're great. When you hear them, you do go, yeah, yeah, that's right. Nice. Like that's hilarious. Right. Um. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's why he's worthy of inclusion in this. And um, plus, I'm very, very proud of our artwork for this episode. Yes, it is excellent artwork. Just because we could use the phrase "Nostradamus didn't see it coming." I mean, it is perfect so um and who's next i don't know i'm not i would i keep thinking about like, who should we i kind of i don't know because we're on a roll so i want all my favorites to be out like sure. i kind of want Tallulah I or isadora so. i'm kind of tempted to go with one of those i think mm -hmm. we need another woman and those are just great yeah stories that I can relate to. <laughs> I mean, maybe we do Tallulah and then yeah, something else not of that Ilk. era. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I and like we it. To, and we got to cut all this part out. Or we just put a giant bleep over it, right? No, because we we announced. Oh, did we announce Nostradamus last week? We hinted around it. Oh. We talked about prediction. Can you, you wouldn't be able to predict who our next guest would be. Oh. I feel like it's okay if we know who our next guest is to let people know so they're okay. excited. Well, we'll try it. We'll try. Isn't it this that what they see. teach you in podcasting school that you're supposed to tease what's coming up and get I, people I guess so. yes. to mark their that calendars is... and excited? So 
Yes. So mark your calendars next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It's a little event kid. Yes. All right. Give them uh, time to research her a little bit. If they don't know. Or just get excited to learn a lot about her. And she, mm -hmm. again, when it comes to fun people to research. She's way Lady more fun good, than Nostradamus. She was a good hang is yes. basically the story you can take away from that. I have a really great little like makeup bag that has a great quote of hers on there. And I'm forgetting what it is. But it's something about like, I wish I was, if I were, if I were, if I had the chance to do it all again, I'd make the same mistakes only sooner. <laughs> something That's like that. Good. It's good. It's a good one. I like it. Unlike my other makeup bag, which I love just as much, which is always trust people who like big butts for they cannot lie. <laughs> That's what I keep all my cords in. It's right here. That's the. It's the greatest bag ever. No. And that's from one of my famous, uh, famous nights, favorite nights, too. What? Sir, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Oh, yes. That kind of night. Of like meant evenings. Yes. No. K and I. No. Absolutely. He yes. would be at my round table for yes. sure. <laughs> Insert jokes about that round table here. I know. Yes. For sure. So thank you, Warren. Um, and you know his shield would have an anaconda on it. <laughs> it... <laughs> He'd carry it with his lance. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. We got to call some of our friends who have the ability to knight and uh, crown. And joust. I, jousting, I think uh, Sir Maxlock would not really. He could go either way. Sure. But I think, you know, if we called our friends at Sealand and asked if they could actually make sir max a lot a night yes that's our next uh i feel we could do mission. this this is a good mission because that would make him sir sir mix a lot which right is just... which is even better yes. like the double double sir yeah oh especially if he added the initials mm, that would be I mean, obe so... that kind yes. of thing or, or yes. i guess it'd be cbe if you get the cbe identity. yeah so anyway, um, yes. as you can tell by the cat, yes, I think it's uh, time to, to wrap this one up. So thank you for listening. And thank you for playing. Tune in again. Yes. Um, and, and you can, if you, you can now find these little ditties also yes. right after the podcast. So if Correct. you are driving and not able to go to YouTube and see our loveliness, um, you can just keep listening and not yes. get in a car accident or you can skip over if you don't like it, mm -hmm. but and, we'll know. And what was the email again? Is it prof for professional production company at Gmail? Well, we have two because the one locked us out. <laughs> what better way to sound professional? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I have it. Why are you asking questions like this? I Sorry. um, I, we have two. Okay, on Instagram and Facebook, uh, message us. Things, just we are at, just at slide into Sports our Pod. DMs. DM us uh, any thoughts, comments, questions. If you have some very good last words, I think that'd be another great segment for this show. Mm -hmm. Is sharing people's favorite last words of people in their lives. Well, yeah, and then I think some of those stories, I think, could have their own episodes, too. Yes, very true. But Maybe I agree. Maybe the whole season of them. We could actually do a show where people could call in and share their stories. Wow. But uh, with, we'd have to get our one, emotions. It's, it's Rachel and... from Detroit. <laughs> online, too, is Rachel from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's from all over the world competing the show, the show that brings all rachels together all rachels together 